One thing I've noticed about my videos is that when I speak about philosophical concepts, they tend to go over 10 minutes, even if I'm scripted, even if I know what to say, even if, even when I am extremely clear and to the point, they still go over 10 minutes. And there's a reason for that. It's because I am an intelligent human being. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing to a great extent. Uh, and I got to thinking about this earlier, uh, as far as who's in the driver's seat. And I got this idea while I was looking at cars drive past me on the uh, road, because I was at a bus stop. And I thought, you know, how is life like driving? How is driving like life? Well, some people drive, some people don't. Some people live life, some people just exist. And there's a specific, there's a couple of specific reasons why this happens. Uh, most people in our society, they, um, they tend to let other people in the driver's seat. And if you want to use driver's seat, uh, Equivalent is consciousness, your consciousness, your driver's seat, your mind. If you believe something, why did you believe it? Is it your belief or is it somebody else's? Because a lot of people, they take the keys, their will, their desire, their inner power, right? The fire within, the passion, and they give it to somebody else. It's like having a 69 Mustang that you've spent a lot of money and time in making really unique. But then you hand the keys to the first stranger you see on the street, and you say to that stranger, hey, wherever you want to go is fine with me. Well, what if that stranger wants to drive over a cliff? What if that driver, what if that, what if that stranger wants to just, you know, you know, drive head first into a wall, or go, you know, some weird direction and, you know, go somewhere where you don't want to be. You see, most of us have done that with our lives, because we're not living the lives that we want. And we've done that because we've given up our driver's seat. We've given up our keys to some stranger. And, you know, it's not necessarily a stranger. Maybe it's, you know, words from your parent, or from teachers, or from former friends, or from whoever, where you're letting them in the driver's seat, and they're choosing the direction of your life, and you're not. Um, that's a very disturbing issue. That's a very disturbing thing, if you truly think about it. And yeah, there's lots, lots of obstacles when it comes to driving. Um, you may get a flat tire. You may get pulled over by a state-sponsored thug. You might run out of gas. There's hundreds of things that can go wrong. But it does not mean that you're not a driver. Just like your life can take, something can happen to you. You can get bad health. You can get into an accident or whatever. But you're still the one, you still, you're the driver. You own that car, you own that body. You know, think, when I say driver, think consciousness. When I say keys, think willpower. Think desire. When I say car, think body, think life. Because a lot of people, they're not living their lives, they're just existing. There's a lot of people who aren't driving, they're sitting by a bus stop waiting for somebody else to take them where that driver wants to go. Not where you want to go, where they want to go. And they're the other ones deciding how you get there. Um, it's, it's very troubling to me how much control people give, them, give, some, uh, give other people. I mean, seriously, if, you've had a, if you had this car, your dream car, and put thousands of dollars into it, would you even think of giving the car keys to a stranger or to somebody who you could not trust? That's insane. 
but yet that's what we do with our lives. We let other people dictate our destination. We let other people dictate our direction. Now say you're in your car and you want to drive to the mall or you want to drive to the, uh, the ASU stadium. Uh, how are you going to get there? You're going to take the shortest route. The route that gets you there the shortest. Now, what if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or whatever? How are you going to get there? Well, there's very specific things that you do to get to that destination. Uh, but just like a lot of people, when they drive to a destination, some of them make all these weird stops at places that they don't need to be. And eventually they waste gas and time. And they never get to their destination because they've spent so much time screwing around. Most people live their lives that way. Most people say, gee, I'd like to be fill in the blank. But then they make all these weird little things. It's like, it's like they wake up in the morning. They wake up in the morning. They get into their car. They get into the driver's seat. But, and then they say, well, today I think I'm going to, because it's my day off, today I think I'm going to, uh, you know, redecorate the, uh, the study, right? I mean, that's the desire. But then they say, well, first I'm going to have coffee and read the newspaper or the internet or check my email or whatever. Um, you know, and then pretty soon they get distracted by something else. And pretty soon it gets to be noon, they say, well, I'll do it after lunch. And they have lunch, then they, uh, you know, decide to play video games for a little bit. And pretty soon, it's far in the afternoon, they've gotten nothing done. The day is pretty much completely gone. And they haven't even touched the study. That's how people live their lives. It's how people live their lives, and it's incredibly troubling because I see that I've done that with my life. I've let other people into the driver's seat. And a lot of these people have taken it by force. They've said, no, Nick, we're not gonna let you be good at math. Or, no, Nick, we're not gonna let you have transportation. We're not gonna let you have a car. We're not gonna let you have a life. I mean, think about it, you know, you're driving, some, you know, you stop at a stoplight, some guy comes up to you with a gun. Whether he's an uh, employee of the state or not, and says, I'm going to steal your car. And then you have no way of getting to where you want to go. And that's just like, with a lot of people, they surrender their consciousness. They walk up to a total stranger and say, hey, here, here's the keys to my car. Do whatever you want to do, go wherever you want to go. And the stranger might say, well, gee, I want you to have a miserable life for whatever reason. You know, I, I think you should be a, a, a dishwasher or a burger flipper. Even though you have the capacity to be a doctor or a lawyer or a writer or an actor or something else that's great. See, most people, they're not in the driver's seat. And that's a very, very depressing thing to understand. But there's hope. Because now that you understand where you are in relation to your car, in relation to your life, you can get into the driver's seat and you can take back control. And you can live your life and you can drive. Don't, don't sit there and say, well, Nick, some people, you know, they don't drive and they still have lives. No, they don't. Let's be honest. Honest. I don't know very many successful people who don't drive. I mean, the reality of it is, they're not living, they're just existing. And I've never, I, 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 I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who has ever become a success and not been a driver. You've got to drive this. 
if you want to drive the car. You have to get into the driver's suit, take up your keys, and drive. Have a day.